has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Good morning. How many are ready to worship the Lord today? Amen. If you're in this place, just enter and stand if you can. We're going to start worship in a second. Come on. I just, I, I'm going read something quickly that I, the Lord just put on my heart before we start. But he was pierced through for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace fell upon him. And by his stripes, come on, church, say it with me. We are healed. Come on, by his stripes, church. We are healed. And today, this morning, you are going to trade your heaviness, as Mick always says, for joy. This morning, you're going to trade your sickness. By his stripes, you are healed. And through him. You are going to be delivered. You are going to be healed. And we're just going to worship him because he is worthy. But we're going to start with some praise this morning. And I just want you to joyfully lift up to God all that heaviness, all that shame. Because we're going to praise this. We're going to sing this song. And you're going to declare it in your life. Make it true and give it to God. You're going to trade that sickness. And he's going to give you healing. You're going to trade that shame. He's going to give you freedom. Come on, because his stripes were enough. His stripes were enough. Lord, we thank you that your stripes are and were enough for us. This morning, oh Lord, we worship and we praise you, God. And we give it to you. And God, let us give it with a joyful heart, a sacrifice of praise, a sweet aroma to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
there's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare to your our living Lord. Your presence, Lord. And I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love.
to this particular scripture in Psalm 19. And it basically just speaks of the heavens declaring the glory of God throughout the nations, throughout the heavens from east to west, north to south, just perpetually declaring the greatness and the glory of our God. And as I was reading the scripture, the Lord was saying, and encouraging me that as we worship, our worship needs to, to echo the glory in heaven, echo the declarations that are already coming down to earth from heaven. So as the declarations come down of glory, of hallelujah to our God, we need to be echoing the sentiments of heaven this morning. Hallelujah. Every word of worship should just be an echo in harmony with heaven, declaring who he is, declaring the glory of our God in the heavens. Every word that he does, every word that he's given, every work that he's created. You even look up at the sky, it says, and the works in the sky declare the greatness of our God in the firmament. Hallelujah. So as we go into this last song, we just want to declare who he is and just say that he is holy and just respond and just say, God, in this moment right now, here I am, God to just pour out my worship at your feet and just give you everything I have because you are so worthy. Hallelujah. Can anyone agree and just say amen this morning in agreement with me? Let's just declare who he is. Let's just sing hallelujah this morning and just worship. Hallelujah. So 
I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful. And I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like waters. Jesus, you're beautiful, and I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful, and I know that your eyes are like flames of fire. I know that your head is white as wool. I know that your voice, it sounds like water. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. There is no one like you. Jesus, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. How can you be?
never find someone like you. Jesus, you're beautiful. Jesus, you're beautiful. Oh, yes, Lord. He comes the glory and the Lord. It's filling this room. Just sing. Jesus, you are here in this room. Lord, I thank you. Your word says, come to me, all who are thirsty. Come to me, all who are hungry. And I will fill you, not with the things of this world, with living life, with bread, the bread of life. The wine, the blood. And so, Father, I just thank you. You're saying to those, if you've come here and you have nothing to give, that's okay. Because I'm here. My presence is here. And I will fill you. And so, Lord, we just say yes and amen, Father. Do what you're going to do today, God. Speak to us like you've never spoken to us before, Lord. May your presence be magnified and glorified in this room. 
Father, there is nothing like your presence. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, as we just, as we, we, we move the way that you move, Lord, we go the way that you go, God. We surrender ourselves to you today, Lord. Sure. We thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. You alone are worthy, God. Sure. Yeah, Father, I just thank you. I feel like the Lord is saying, like, there's somebody who needs healing of your heart. And the Lord is saying, I've come to mend it. So, Father, we just say thank you. We partner with you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, we dedicate today to you, and we thank you, Lord. I thank you for the word that's about to be preached in Jesus' name. May it go forth, and Lord, may it, may it be tended. May, may your word just tend to our heart. We bless you. We honor you this day, Lord Jesus. For better is one day in your courts than anywhere else. Lord. So we bless you. In Jesus' name, we all said Amen. Good morning, church. How's everyone doing? How's your week? It was okay? It was okay? Blessed? We hope it was blessed. We're just so glad you're here joining us today. No matter what kind of week you had, we just want to say welcome. And I'd like to introduce our speaker for t today. She is my sister. We have to raise her up a little bit so you can see her better. But we believe that God is truly moving here this morning. Do you believe that, church? And whether you do believe that or not, God is going to move today. We can't stop God. But we can definitely let him in. So if you're ready, I'll turn that down in a second. <laughs> if you're ready, church, are you ready to experience God this morning? We're here to pray for Vincent too. Maybe you're a little sidetracked today. Maybe your mind's a little full with other things. We're praying that you pray for our dear brother Vincent as he's in the hospital right now. There is a healing coming. He is doing okay, but let's keep him in our prayers this morning. You guys ready? All right. Yeah, let's take a moment to just pray for Vince. God, we just lift up Vince. God, we thank you that this morning we declare that by your stripes we are healed. So we just pray for healing, oh Lord, in his knee or anything that's in pain. God, we just thank you for your presence. Your presence was here, oh Lord, but we thank you for just a place that welcomes your presence, oh Lord. Can you just affirm that he's in the room? Just say, just say you're in the room, Jesus. Come on, just say you're in the room. Come on, let him be known. Come on, let it be known in your heart that he's right here. Come on, just say you're right here, Jesus. You're right here. You're right here. Come on, there's accountability when we know that Jesus is in the room. Faith rises when we know Jesus is in the room. Purity rises when we know Jesus is in the room because in his presence, it crushes all the iniquities. It purifies the temple. You're in the room, Jesus, so we yield to you. This is yours. Amen. You guys, everyone's sitting. Thank you. You guys can, you guys are seated. 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 Oh, kids. All my kids, all the kids, who are you following? That door, the door has opened. Go to your Sunday school room. Lord, we just bless these kids. We thank you for a spirit that is the same that will work through the kids just as much. Thank you, Lord. Bless them and their teachers. <laughs> How many of you guys miss my dad up here? <laughs> I do. <laughs> So we're pre we're, I'm going to be speaking on Romans 3. So if you guys have your Bibles with you, open up to that. I'm going to be reading from the NASB. Um, but it says this. Then what advantage has the Jew, or what is the benefit of circumcision? Great in every respect, first of all, that they were entrusted with the oracles of God. 
What then? If some did not believe, their unbelief will not nullify the faithfulness of God, will it? May it never be. Rather, let God be found true, though every man may be found, found a, a liar. As it is written, that you may be justified in your words and prevail when you are judged. But if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? The God who inflicts wrath is not unrighteous, is he? I'm speaking in human terms. May it never be, for otherwise how will God, God judge the world? But if through the lie the truth of God abounded in it to his glory, why am I also still being judged as a sinner? And why not say, as we slanderously reported, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may come. Their condemnation is just. What then, are we better than they? Not at all. For we have already charged that both Jews and Greeks are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. There is no, none who understands. There is none who seeks for God. All have turned aside together. They have become useless. There is none who does good. There is not even one. Their throat is an open grave. With their tongues they keep deceiving. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their paths. And the path of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be closed and all the world may become accountable to God. Because by the works of the law, no flesh will be justified in his sight. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all those who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation, propitiation <laughs> uh, in the, his blood through faith. This was to demonstrate his righteousness. Because in the forbearance of God, he passed over the sins previously committed. For the demonstration, I say, of his righteousness at the present time, so that he would be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Where then is the boasting? It is excluded, but what, by what kind of law of works? No, but by a law of faith. <laughs> For we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Or is, the, is God the God of Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles also? Yes, of Gentiles also. Since indeed God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith is one. Do we then nullify the law through faith? May it never be. On the contrary, we, we establish the law. Whew. I know, there's a lot in that chapter. <laughs> so I think Travis, me and Travis were both preaching on Romans, and he talked a little bit of the context of Romans. But Paul um, was not in Rome while he was writing the book of Romans. He was actually planning his journey to Rome, just for context. He was planning um, probably throughout his, the end of his third missionary um, journey. He was planning his trip to Rome. And he's writing to the, the Romans and his plans and talking to them. And it's likely because the Jews got uh, kicked out of Rome that they came back after this. So just a little context. <laughs> and yeah, we're going to go into this. We're just going to go into this. So what is the benefit of being a Jew? He first talks about that and he gives them props. Yes, you were the first to hear from the Lord. Yes, this is true. However, they were unfaithful as we read in the Old Testament. But then what? This whole Romans 3 is really talking about the gospel here. It's really summarizing the gospel. See, we read in Romans um, from 
9 to 18 that there was nobody, there was nobody who was righteous. There was actually nobody in the whole world that was righteous. Although he spoke to the Jew first, they were unfaithful to God. Does that mean that the Greek get to esteem themselves as better? No, because they were also unfaithful to God. Because what did the law reveal? Right? We read this. What did the law actually show us? And some people will say, the law showed us this and that. But what the law showed us is that we could not do it on our own. Somebody say justified by faith. Come on. Come on, somebody say justified, justified by faith. See, the Jewish people tried to do it on their own. They made their sacrifices. They did all these things, but it was never enough. And that's why they had to tie, literally tie a rope to their ankles because in the presence of God, sin could not survive. Travis pointed this out to me one day, and it's so true. A lot of people will say, God cannot live in the presence of sin. Actually, sin cannot live in the presence of God. Thank you, Travis, for that one. Sin cannot live in the presence of God. And as it says, none was righteous, not even one. See, sin was our condition. It filled our whole life. It was our lips. It was our everything. Before Jesus Christ, we were a sinner. We had all fallen short of the glory of God. There was none found righteous. He searched the world. There was not one. And because God is faithful, can someone say God is faithful? Because God is love and he loves you. Can someone say God loves me? Look at your neighbor and say God loves you. Because God loves you, he didn't want you to die in his presence. Because God loves you, he did not want you to die in his presence. See, he knew that we could not do it on our own. And that's what the law shows us. It, does, it says not to take away the law because you know what the law shows us? We can't do it. We need a savior. We need a savior. Come on, say it. We need a savior. We need a savior. Savior, savior. We need a savior. <sighs> it's so beautiful. <laughs> but God loved you so much that in the state of your sin, your identity in sin, as we were all born into sin, he saw you in your sin. And he looked at you and he said, I don't want them to die in my presence. I don't want them to die in my presence because that's what would have happened. Without Jesus, we would die in his presence. We're unable to do it on our own. And I'm, I'm, I'm telling you right now, and it's a, it's a thing that we, can, we get to praise with. You cannot do it on your own. And I find joy to say with you right now that you cannot do it without Jesus. You cannot live by the flesh. You're never good enough. That's why good people die all the time. Their deeds are worth nothing without Jesus. Without Jesus, I am sinful. Without Jesus, my lips are sinful. Everything in being is sinful. But with Jesus, I am justified. I am made clean. I am righteous. That is who Jesus says I am. I am justified by faith and not what I do. I am justified by faith and not preaching on this pulpit. I'm justified by faith and not this microphone. In faith alone, I am justified. I I thank you, Lord, that I am justified not by the works that I do or the sins I have committed, but by your blood. I am justified. <sighs> Come on, someone say justified by faith. See, we live in a world that says do more and be more. <laughs> when Jesus says be less so I can be everything, <laughs> We live in a world that says good do, good deeds, be a good person. When Jesus says, you're not good enough, die to yourself and resurrect with me and be good. Be these things. I make you everything that you could ever become. Someone say justified by faith. Come on, justified by faith. I was a pastor. I am a pastor's daughter growing up in the church. I thought that I needed to do everything right, but guess what? It wasn't about what I had to do, but what he did for me on the cross. <laughs> it 
it says that in the word that he was not satisfied with any of the sacrifices. But there was one found worthy. There was one who was perfect, which is why he sent his son Jesus. Was there any other way besides Jesus? No. Because none could live in the presence of God because all were born into sin. So we needed someone who wasn't born into sin. There comes Jesus, born of the Spirit, fully man, fully divine, a perfect sacrifice to God. He is the perfect sacrifice you could never be. So why are you trying to be the perfect sacrifice when he perfects you, when he transforms you, when you are not justified by who you are, but who he has made you to be? In your death, you will be resurrected in Christ. You will be reborn. You will be a new nature. You will be a new person. It's not about who you try to be in your flesh, but who God recreates you to be. You die to all the things you thought you knew. You're reborn, and I was talking to Eden about this. You're reborn. All of a sudden, I learned how to walk again. All of a sudden, I know I can't do it on my own. I'm a child, so I need my father. All of a sudden, I'm learning how to talk to people in kindness, like my mom talked about this morning. In gentleness, all of a sudden, I'm learning to re-walk, to re-step. I'm learning because I was once sinful. I was once a child of darkness. Now I'm a child of God. Jesus, God, teach me who I am. Someone say justified by faith. Some of us need to relearn who we are in Christ. And some of us need to relearn who we are when we're born again. It's not who I was. And your past sins didn't make you who you are right now. You didn't need to go through that sin to be who you are today. You needed to go through Jesus to be who you now are in Christ. He teaches us. He delivers us. Because we are justified by him and him alone. It's not about what we can do. It's about what we couldn't do, church. And we couldn't do it on our own. We can't do it on our own. It's not about how much you preach on stage or how much you can sing beautifully. Because you know what? I find the most beautiful worshipers are the ones who can't sing because it's so pure and it's like, ah, it's like crazy. It sounds crazy sometimes. But I understand that God looks at the heart. And by his spirit, I see the purity in worship. I'm telling you before when there's sometimes I would go and people couldn't play, I would be like, uh, uh, what is that? But now I go and I say, what a beautiful, pure aroma to the Lord. This pure worship to him. They don't care about how they look like. They're, they know that dignity isn't a fruit of the spirit. All they are concerned with is, are they worth as God in the room? That God is in the room and they want to worship him and be pure worship because they are no, they, they know they're not justified by their works, but they are justified by faith. <sighs> oh, some of you have been trying so hard to be the perfect Christian. Some of you have been trying so hard to live up to expectations that the Lord did not put on you. Some of you have been trying so hard to make and provide for your family when I say you're not justified by that. Come on, someone say justified by faith. Uh, the righteousness of God was manifested. Oh my gosh, guys. The righteousness of God was manifested. He knew that you could not be righteousness enough, so he manifested his own righteousness through his son. Do you not understand that God loves you? Though you were a sinner, though you were unrighteous, he loved you so much that he made his own righteousness manifested through his son, Jesus. He already gave you the gift. It's time for you to receive it and stop thinking that you need to create what has already been created. It's time for you to receive what Jesus has already done for you and stop trying to put it in your own agenda. Stop trying to be who you want to be. 
You died to who you were, and now you are walking by faith in who Jesus calls you to be. I love this, uh, this quote. It says, um, it was him for me. Now it's me for him. We have not been justified by what our hands have done, but we are justified by the piercing of what Jesus' hands feet have done and his crown. <sighs> Come on. It's time to, to lay it all down. It's time to lay it all down. <sighs> it's time to give it back to Jesus. <sighs> you know, and you might ask yourself, well, how will I know? <sighs> how will I know? How will I know I'm forgiven? And that's a lie that the enemy has put in, in your head that you need to do more or be more or that his blood wasn't enough, that you're not loved. But the truth is in this whole passage, it's just talking about that your justification was through Jesus. You are justified and it's a gift of grace through redemption. See, he covered you in his blood so he could pass over just like he did in Exodus. <laughs> oh man, we're just, we've just been continually breaking defiled religion in this church. It's not about the book of rules. It's about the fact that he fulfilled the book of rules. He fulfilled it. He finished it. He was the accomplishment of it all. He was enough to fulfill every law. And now we know that we, when we walk in the Spirit, it is fulfilled. It is finished. Come on, I want you guys to say this, to clear this over yourself. It is finished. I want you to think about all the things that you've done in the past, all the lies that the enemy has spoken over you, and I want you to say, it is finished. Come on, to clear this over your life, it is finished. It is finished. I am justified by faith. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Jesus came to us, guys. We didn't deserve it. Do you not think that God could have stayed up there and ignored that and just all of us die in his presence? No, but he loved you enough in your sin to know that you needed a savior. He loved you enough. Come on. <laughs> John, can you come up here for a sec? We're going to stand, and we're just going to declare some truth. And I'm, I'm going to believe that there's going to be some freedom in the, in the room this morning. It's not a long sermon. I swear I have the exegetical version right here, but <laughs> the Holy Spirit just, <sighs> he wants to break, he wants to break dead religion in your hearts today. He wants to break it. It's not about how many times you went to church. It's not about how good you are, because you'll never be good enough. <sighs> we all turned away from God, and we all needed a savior. And it's time and for God to just circumcise us today in our hearts. You've been nullifying or declining the grace of God by living through the law. In your attempt to be more, you've actually ignored the gift that he's offered you. But he's extending more grace right now in this room. He's extending faith in this room to believe that his blood is enough. Shame has rose up in your heart and his blood is enough right now. Just come back to him. Ask for forgiveness. T turn away and, and come back to him right now. His blood is enough. I just want you to declare that your blood is enough for me.
Come on. Your blood is enough for me. Come on, say it. Your blood is enough for me. I am justified by you and you alone. Some of you don't believe you're saved this morning. <laughs> but you are justified by him. And if you've repented, you are. So it's time to declare that. Because we don't say it enough, to be honest. A lot of people don't know. So let's declare this. I am saved. Come on. If you don't believe it, come to him and ask for more faith. If you've already repented, it's, it's enough. His blood is enough. Come on. It's enough. It's dead. It's dead. Say bye-bye. It's gone. It's gone. It's buried. I don't see that old version of Rhema. It's dead. So when someone brings it up, oh, she's dead. That person's dead. <laughs> the new is alive and I am justified through Jesus Christ. All those sins are buried and goodbye. And I have resurrected with Christ. I am a new creation. <laughs> this is the gospel. This is the gospel. We were not enough. Our identity was rooted in sin and we were not enough. So he sent someone as the perfect sacrifice who was. So that you could come into his presence today. You could come into his presence and know that you are justified. You can come into his presence with confidence. Some of you have been coming into his presence and you haven't been confident in his presence. You haven't been comforted because you just feel so much shame. But you are justified by him. And you can enter his place with thanksgiving. You can enter his place with no shame. The difference between now and then is now his presence actually crushes the sin. It crushes the sin through the, his, our sin through the blood of Jesus. <sighs> Come on. It's time to gain some confidence in knowing who you are in Christ and knowing who has justified you. Come on, let's start off with something. The old me is dead. Come on. Goodbye. Just say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Just say bye. And the new is alive. I am justified by Jesus. I am washed clean by Jesus. I am free through Jesus. I have received grace. If you've never been able to enter the presence of God with confidence because you've been looking too much at yourself, we're just going to take some time. And you're going you're gonna to know that his presence is in this room. And you're going to come into his presence with no shame. No shame anymore. The law has been fulfilled. You don't have to work to try to be better anymore. And we're just going to worship. And that, if that's you, you've been just looking so much at what you can do. It's time to look to Jesus. Can I call the worship team up here? We're just going to worship. And if that's you and you, you just want to be free in his presence. Be confident in his presence. And that you need to know now, you're saved. You are saved. If you've repented, it's enough. Turn away and don't look, look back. <laughs> Just worship him. We're going to go into his presence. His presence is here, but there's a Shekinah glory presence available. An evident presence that he wants to make known to you. ready to receive. Open your heart and give your brokenness and your broken heart to the Lord right now. Just give it to him right now.
think it's tra tra transmission of all the lights in the show. And this is not to make an ambience, just to keep your focus. It's quiet. I'm just going to remain with you. you need to know who's in the room, just declare if you need more space, just ask for it. I see weights being lifted right now. I see heavy, there's heaviness, and now it's light as a feather. I see bondages, you're carrying a weight. Just get out, loosen it right now in the name of Jesus. I just pray for those bondages to get loose right now. feel just lighter in this room this morning? Do you feel that late weight just lifted? I just, I feel it in the room. The weight, the shift, the circumcision. He's actually cutting out those dead ends that you don't need anymore. And you never have to look back. still in this moment right now I want to I want to mention something that that I saw earlier in worship we were seeing that your glory fill the room and I saw his glory fill in the room but then I saw I saw a cup an empty cup some of us need filling we all need filling heard the words let this cup overflow so if you guys need to be refilled or, or you want an overflow hold your hands out to God like, like this hallelujah Jesus God we thank you for who you are oh God that you fill us, Lord, with our, your Holy Spirit. Not just to flaunt it, but to give you glory, oh God. As you pour into us, oh God, let us not just pour out to others, but pour to you, God. Pour out our hearts, our praise to you, oh God, to reciprocate what you have given to us, oh God. God, we just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would just come and fill and fill and fill each and every single cup here, oh God. Jesus. You have given us salvation, Father, in your name, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that, oh God. But God, I pray it would just be something that we move by, not something we know something we move by the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. We move by the empowerment of your grace, O oh Lord Jesus. So, so fill, O oh God. Fill every, every gap. Fill every gap, O oh God. 
God's just mending hearts right now. I don't know, that's just what I'm seeing right now. He's sewing things back together. Let him. Just gonna, I'm gonna pray and then uh, I'll give you the information after. But first, we're gonna read Proverbs 11:24 um, to 25. It says, "Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will pr- will prosper. Those who refresh others will be will themselves be refreshed." Father God, I pray that you give us a heart to give. With everything. All that we are and all that we have. For everything that we own now. Or perish. But everything you've given us, oh God, will remain. So God, I pray that that you bless the offering, oh God. I pray that you bless our hearts as we give this offering to you, Father. That our hearts would be tender and excited to be able to partake in such a manner. To be able to to offer you, God. Offer you this this blessing of, of, um, of tithes and offerings just have such a heart of thanksgiving of who you are more than what you just do God on the day to day but who you are and the cross oh God the cross so God we just pray that you would just you would just give peace oh God though it may hurt in the flesh. I pray that we would have peace in our spirits because you give us that. I pray that the message that was preached today, oh God, that, that it would stick into our spirits, oh God, and we would be applying it to our life. So bless us today, oh God. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. So uh, Tita Rota is here um, at the front. If you guys have uh, cash or checks, um, you could also send us an e-transfer online, which is info at ChristForLife.ca. Um, and when you write a check, you could write, oh, it's over here. Uh, <laughs> if you want to write us a check, it's to Christ for Life Ministries. Um, and if you want to give specifically to Asavir's missions, you can write in the memo missions, or if you'd like to give to the food bank, you can write um, mem- like in the memo uh, Good Measure Food Bank. And um, you could also send an e-transfer to the food bank through the, their email, which is info at goodmeasurefoodbank.com And am I missing anything? I think that's I think that's it. Um, yeah. Bless. Hi everyone. So we have some exciting announcements. Today, if you are a young adult, so I believe that's like 18 to like, I don't know if we're capping it off or anything. If you feel like a young adult, just come out. We love you. So if you're feeling like a young adult today, tonight at 6 p.m., Pastor Phil is actually opening us up in our first young adults meeting. And that's really exciting. And I'm going to be there. Phil's going to be there. Rima and some of the team, you know, not all of us can make it tonight, but we will be there. And it's going to be an awesome time. So if I sold that well, you should come out. And if I didn't sell it well, well, come out anyway. It's going to be better than how I make it sound because the glory of God's going to be there. So 
Also, we have Sunday morning prayer every morning at 8 a.m. So if you are a prayer warrior and you just want to be a part of something special in the morning and, and be even more involved in our church, it's through a Sunday service. Just be here at 8 a.m. I know it seems early, but when you're un, like in the presence of God that early in the morning before church service, it's special. It's really special. We gather together. We First, we start off by ourselves. And we read the word, we pray, we worship. And then we gather together. And then Pastor Veer leads us in a little special message that the Lord is speaking to him. And it's actually very amazing. And it's one of my favorite things every Sunday. So if you want to be a part of an awesome like mini prayer meeting with your church, come out every Sunday at 8 a.m. And you can just join us and we'll hang out. And then women's prayer is every Thursday. So if you are a woman in Christ for Life Ministries or you are a woman that just wants to pray, we will hook you up with Sister Lafayette and we will get you on this phone line prayer. And it's at 7 p.m. every single Thursday. So if you need breakthrough in your life or you just need a blessing or you need just need to pray or you just want to pray for someone, come out, be encouraged, join our women in this church because they are prayer warriors. And then... We also have, is it junior high this Friday? Oh yeah, there is. So junior high, kids and parents. This Friday, we are decorating our church for something called Hallelujah Day. So we need you to come out here and help Pastor Phil decorate this church. Because we already know Pastor Phil's touch is not decoration. He's not that artsy guy, so he needs your help. So please come and help him. By the grace of God, please come and help him. And make this place look really good for Hallelujah Day. Phil is bringing the decorations. And if you're feeling extra grateful and extra thankful and you want to, like, really bless the kids that are coming, bring all the candy you can. We have a box out front. Peanut-free candy. There we go. We'll, we'll, be, we'll play it safe. Bring the peanut-free candy. So if you're watching from home and you're like, guys, what's that? Or cash. If you want to bring cash, you can bring cash too. Is that for candy? That's for candy as well. So we just want to have the most ridiculous amount of candy possible so we can give away the most ridiculous amount of candy possible. So yes, I know parents, the kids are going to come home a little bit hyper that night, but it's just one night of the year. They have school in the morning. The teachers will deal with them the next day. How's that sound? Amen, amen. Let's say amen to that. And not just that, we are actually doing a special evangelistic message next week. So if you want someone in your family to know Jesus, bring them out. We're going to be preaching the gospel clearly, and we're going to believe for a harvest. We're going to believe that God is going to touch this church very powerfully in our Sunday service. We're going to believe that God is going to come and fill us with his Holy Spirit, baptize us afresh in his fire, and we believe we're going to see miracles come and pour down in this church. So we are going to host this service next week, and, and we're going to preach the gospel. And Friday... Who misses Pastor Veer's journey class? Anyone miss it? I know a bunch of people are saying yes at home right now. So if you miss journey class, I have very, very exciting news for you. First Kings 5, Second Kings 5, this Friday at 6.30 p.m. That's great news, guys. So if you want to go deeper into the Word of God, yeah, so if you want to go deeper into the Word of God, you need to register by talking to Pastor Jaira, and he will hook you up with that Zoom link. And then you can join him in this online Bible study where it goes very, very, very deep into what the Word of God is saying. And you can go deeper into your faith by understanding what the Word of God is what it's, it's actually saying. So you're going to go through the whole Bible with him. He went from Genesis all the way to 2 Kings already. And he's going to go all the way to Revelation. So if you want to hop on board right now, just talk to Pastor Jaira after service. He will hook you up with that Zoom link. And that's all the announcements for today. Pastor Jaira. Woo! How many of y'all had a good Sunday today? It's not a bad way to start the week, to start fresh. And not just showering or looking nice, but to have a fresh spirit, amen? A fresh coming of Christ. How many of you are ready to start this week with Jesus? 
How many of you ready to start this week with Jesus in a way like never before? If you guys have been waiting for something, it might be today. It's not just going to happen next week, Sunday. Don't wait for Sunday. Jesus is meeting you now. So stand with me, church, as we close. As we close and we start this new week together. If you have work or school tomorrow, so do we. <laughs> if you have problems in life or situations, so do we. If you're looking for healing, so are we. If you're having a hard time in life, that's life. But if you're ready to be blessed together, we can start this week together on the right foot. And if you don't have a right foot, we'll do it on the left foot. If you don't have a left foot, we'll do it in the right spirit. We're just covering all the ground here. Because there's definitely a place for you. So come pray with me, church. Close your eyes if you can. Lift up your hands if you can. Keep, keep my brother and my friend Vincent in your prayers for healing. Keep your friends in your hearts, for in your hearts, in your minds right now. If you have someone you want to pray for, put them in your mind and heart right now. If you have a family member to pray for right now, think about them right now as we say this prayer. If you're ready just to accept Jesus on your own behalf, just you and God, you can repeat this prayer too. Come on, church, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, church, say, Heavenly Father. We dedicate this week to you. We dedicate this week to you, Father. May you be with me as we go our separate ways. Come on, church, as we go our separate ways. Jesus, wash me clean from all my sins. Come on, church. Jesus, wash me clean from all my sins. Make me pure in your sight. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Jesus, take the rightful place in my life right now. Come on, church, say right now. Thank you, Jesus. May your Holy Spirit, come on, this is a prayer for all of us. May your Holy Spirit guide me throughout this week. May it overflow within me like never before. May Jesus shine brighter in me like never before. We love you. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Amen. Clap.